there's a part of the brain called the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus is like a little mini factory, and it is a place that assembles certain chemicals that match certain emotions that we experience. And those particular chemicals are called peptides. They're small chain amino acid sequences. The body's basically a carbon unit that makes about 20 different amino acids all together to formulate its physical structure. The body is a protein producing machine. In the hypothalamus, we take small chain proteins called peptides and we assemble them into certain neuropeptides or neurohormones that match the emotional states that we experience on a daily basis. So there's chemicals for anger and there's chemicals for sadness and there's chemicals for victimization. There's chemicals for lust. There's a chemical that matches every emotional state that we experience. And the moment that we experience that emotional state in our body or in our brain, that hypothalamus will immediately assemble the peptide that then releases it through the pituitary into the bloodstream. The moment it makes it into the bloodstream, it finds its way to different centers or different parts of the body. Now, every single cell in the body has these receptors on the outside. And one cell can have thousands of receptors studying its surface, kind of opening up to the outside world. And when a peptide docks on a cell, it literally, uh, like a key going into a lock, sits on the receptor surface and attaches to it and kind of moves the receptor and kind of like a doorbell buzzing sends a signal into the cell. It's party time! Along the outside of the cell are these billions of receptor sites that are really just receivers of incoming information. A receptor that has a peptide sitting in it um, changes the cell in many ways. It sets off a whole cascade of biochemical events, some of which wind up with changes in the actual nucleus of the cell. Each cell is definitely alive, and uh, each cell has a consciousness, particularly if we define consciousness as the point of view of an observer. There is always the perspective of the cell. A few years later! <laughs> cell is the smallest unit of consciousness in the body. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. My definition of an addiction is something really simple. Something that you can't stop. Oh, make me suffer, please. Oh, hurt. We bring to ourselves situations that will fulfill the biochemical craving of the cells of our body by creating situations that meet our chemical needs. It always happens to me. Why? addict will always need a little bit more in order to get a rush or a high of what they're looking for chemically. Don't tell me to calm down. You're always buzzing me around. So my definition really means that if you can't control your emotional state, you must be addicted to it. Oh, I knew this was going to happen. That's not what we agreed upon. You're not going to screw me. You won't dear. do anything about it, so I... No, 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 ma'am. Don't dip your half-eaten shrimp back into the cocktail sauce. Screw you and your health codes. I am the bride's sister. I'll stick my ass in the cocktail sauce if I what damn well please. Come on. I want you to get out there and serve and make sure everybody has a full cool laugh. Fun, fun, fun. Listen. With the same attitude and the same chemistry over and over again on a daily basis, when that cell finally decides to divide... When it produces a sister cell or a daughter cell, that next cell will have more receptor sites for those particular emotional neuropeptides and less receptor sites for vitamins, minerals, nutrients, fluid exchange, or even the release of waste products or toxins.
Now, all aging is a result of improper protein production. What happens when we age? Our skin gets, loses elasticity. Well, elastin is a protein. What happens to our enzymes? We don't digest as well. What happens to our synovial fluid? Those are proteins that become brittle and stiff. What happens to our bones? They become thin. So all aging is a result of improper protein production. So then the question arises, does it really matter what we eat? And when, does nutrition really have an effect if the cell doesn't even have the receptor sites after 20 years of emotional abuse to even receive or to let in the nutrients that are necessary for its health? Thank you.